morning, everyone. Oh, where's Governor? Oh, there's Governor Healy. <laughs> Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, our secretary, um, cabinet secretaries, and my fellow community college presidents and friends and supporters. I am Pam Ettinger, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Bunker Hill Community College. I hope you didn't have any trouble navigating all of the new constructions and you're not too muddy on the way in. Uh, we are, Bunker Hill is one of 15 community colleges across the Commonwealth from Cape Cod to the Berkshires. And together our students comprise more than half of all undergraduates enrolled in Massachusetts public colleges and universities. And together we represent the best of our state, working people, parents of children, caregivers for elders, immigrants, veterans, residents of our biggest cities and our smallest towns. And they all share one thing, a desire to rise, not only to a better job or a higher income, but to the fulfillment of their individual potential. Community colleges are the best tool we have to help people in every corner of the Commonwealth to rise and to build a skilled workforce that will ensure our state's growth and prosperity for all. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge my fellow community college presidents in attendance today. Um, if you would please, wait. Um, Ellen Ke Dr. Ellen Kennedy, the president of Berkshire Community College. And Dr., and if you would hold your applause and give a huge <laughs> thunderous one at the end. Uh, Dr. Laura Douglas, president of Bristol Community College. Uh, Dr. John Cox, president of Cape Cod Community College. And um, our newest colleague, um, Dr. Michelle Schatt, president of Greenfield Community College. Uh, Dr. Christina Royal, president of Holyoke Community College. Christina. And Dr. David Podell, president of Mass Bay Community College and the chair of our council this year of presidents. Um, uh, Dr. Phil Sisson, the president of Middlesex Community College. There you are, Phil. Uh, Dr. Bill Heineman, president of North Shore Community College. And Dr. Lane Glenn, president of Northern Essex Community College and one of our senior college presidents around the table. Um, Dr. Luis Pedraja, president of Quinsigaman Community College. Uh, Dr. Jackie Jenkins Scott, the interim president of Roxbury Community College and certainly an elder leader uh, in the city of Boston. Uh, Dr. John Cook, president of Springfield Technical Community College. And um, we're also pleased to be joined by um, the chair of uh, Bunker Hill Community College's Board of Trustees, uh, Mr. Bill Walzak. He is the chair of chairs of the community mm -hmm. college boards mm -hmm. <laughs> and also our representative of the segment on the Board of Higher Education. Um, and, uh, and I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Nate McKinnon, um, the executive director of the Massachusetts Association of Community Colleges, who shepherds the community colleges to our, to our glory and our very um, terrific Deputy Sec uh, Executive Director, Sarah Unit, who help us organize a lot of um, what's going on right now. All of us are honored to serve alongside a governor who has been a fierce advocate of, for community colleges and our students for many years. And it is my pleasure to welcome to our college, Governor Moore Healy. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you so much, Dr. Edinger. It's great to be here, great to be at Bunker Hill. Um, really, really excited to have the team here and to talk a little bit about what we are uh, proud to be announcing today. I appreciate so much the work of our community colleges, and I, it means a great deal to, to me and to the Lieutenant Governor that uh, folks traveled from all over the state to be here, we are, we, we're working on that too. <laughs> we're working on, on the transit, trust me. Um, but we do appreciate that everybody took the time to come and be with us because we wanna talk about what we can do to support our community colleges, to support the work that all of you are importantly engaged in, which really is about the betterment of, of lives and opportunities for residents ultimately families all across the state, and as you'll hear earlier, for our businesses and what we need to do in terms of our competitiveness and making sure we're doing the best that we can uh, to make uh, the value proposition for Massachusetts real. So thank you for that. Uh, I am delighted to be joined today by members of our team, your team, um, fabulous secretaries of, of various cabinets who are with us today. And that they include our uh, Education Secretary, 
Pat Tutwiler and Assistant Secretary Bob LePage, Labor and Workforce Development Secretary Lauren Jones and Undersecretary Jennifer James Price, Economic Development Secretary Yvonne Howe and Undersecretary Ashley Stolba. Uh, folks, the reason they are here today joining us is because this is what this administration is about. It is about teamwork. It is about collaboration. It is about breaking down the balkanization of silos and ultimately for purposes of furthering education, workforce, growth, competitiveness in this state and making this state more equitable with greater opportunity, it's about everybody working together. And so these three secretariats, education, labor and workforce development, economic development, all three are very much synced up, working on implementing policies, thinking through budget commitments and the like, and I know stand ready to work with you and your teams. Uh, grateful, of course, to, to Nate and the Mass Association of Community Colleges uh, for the work uh, and, the, and the collaboration. As I said, it is so great to be here at Bunker Hill Community College uh, to meet students, educators, administrators, we're here today because Bunker Hill represents the incredible opportunities of our community colleges across Massachusetts. It's, it's representative of what exists all across the state. Community colleges are the ticket to economic mobility for so many of our residents. They're key drivers of our business and our economy. They offer students, of course, an affordable, accessible pathway uh, and also arm graduates with the skills that employers are looking for right now in very high demand fields, ranging from healthcare to tech, engineering, advanced manufacturing. And we know how critical this is for our state, our economy at this very moment. We have tens of thousands of jobs out there that are unfilled. And one of the ways we're gonna address that is matching up and syncing up the wonderful programming and opportunity uh, for education through our community colleges with those opportunities. This requires expanding the capacity of these programs, which gets to today's important announcement because um, otherwise it's just uh, a plan without, without action and implementation. And so today we are here very excited to announce that our full fiscal year 2024 budget proposal will include $20 million in funding to create something we're calling the Mass Reconnect Program. This new initiative, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad you're clapping, but um, you'll really be clapping once I tell you what I tell you what this is about, okay? Uh, we just talked about the fact that there are so many jobs out there and there is such need and there are also so many right now who will benefit. As I say, this is $20 million in funding for a new program. We're calling it Mass Reconnect. And what it does is it will cover the cost of community college for anyone age 25 years or older in this state. Uh, this will include, importantly of course, tuition, uh, fees, books and supplies. Importantly, it's also going to include career and wraparound services uh, because we know it's not enough to just get students enrolled in our colleges. They need to be able to complete and finish their education. And there are any number of barriers that get in the way from food, gas, housing, childcare, clothing, you name it. And, and this is also uh, working in our budget to address some of that. In addition to Mass Reconnect, we're also increasing the Community College Success Fund by $4 million. That's a significant increase. It raises it to $18 million. This, this is a program that will be awarding community colleges grants to provide services to improve outcomes for some of our most vulnerable students. These include low-income students, first-generation, minority, students with disabilities, and LGBTQ plus students. As I said, it is not enough to just get people enrolled. They need to be able to successfully and timely complete an education. Mass Reconnect will be transformative for hundreds of thousands of students, for our amazing community colleges, and for our economy. Right now, we estimate that there are 1.8 million Massachusetts residents 
1.8 million who would be eligible for this program. Of those 1.8 million, and remember, that's big. We're a state of nearly 7 million people. So 1.8 million residents eligible today with this, with this proposal. Of that 1.8, 700,000 of them already have some credits towards a college degree. So this is why it's Mass Reconnect. It's about bringing these students back in to education and programming that will help them get jobs and further opportunities for themselves and their families. Um, you know, as somebody, we're, we're deeply, um, this administration invested in breaking cycles of intergenerational poverty that have held so many back for so long. We know this is part of the way that we get there. So the Lieutenant Governor and I can't wait to see this transformative program come to fruition. In addition to this program, we will also, you're getting a, a sneak preview of some of our budget announcements important this afternoon. We're gonna be making a number of other key investments in workforce development programs. We're proposing nearly $47 million for early college and innovation pathways. This is a over $14 million expansion. Uh, and this is, this is really huge. These are the investments that are gonna put our students on a path to careers uh, even before they've graduated from high school. We expect this to expand programming to uh, nearly 20,000 students over the next year. Also, the Innovation Pathways Program will be able to in, uh, enroll uh, tens of thousands of students more with access to coursework in priority industries like IT, engineering, healthcare, life sciences, and advanced manufacturing. So that's important. We're also proposing $5 million for registered apprenticeship programs to continue. Four million, this is a $4 million increase, by the way, um, that builds on an existing package. $18 million to support career technical institutes, which help close the skills training gaps by expanding access to vocational education. Uh, over $1 million for the healthcare worker training and AFL-CIO workforce development programs. $16 million for YouthWorks. This is an important program, subsidizes summer wages uh, for at-risk youth at facil and, and facilitates career development. This really focuses on the 14 to 25 year old uh, set. So we're excited about that. Um, ultimately, you know, what, what we hope to be able to show is our commitment to these incredibly important investments. Investments that are not only in achievable, but absolutely imperative for the future of our state. We're gonna hear about what impact these, uh, these programs, these proposals that we're offering may, may have now from people best situated to actually speak to it, and, and that is uh, students, potential students and, and current students who will be uh, speaking and sharing their, their story shortly, Avalith and, and Nicole. Uh, we're also gonna hear directly from employers. As I say, folks, this is about education, it's about workforce, it's about our economy. And shortly you'll hear from Tom, and he's gonna talk about the talented and diverse pool of candidates that programming like this and our community colleges have a chance to support in an industry that is absolutely cutting edge. So we're excited about that. Bottom line, for us to be successful as a state, and I have talked about this before, it is about people coming together. It is about teamwork, it is about harnessing the immense immense talents and riches we have in our state. Human capital, intellectual capital, innovation, you know, and a commitment, and a commitment to, to seeing a greater realization of opportunity. That's what it's about. And that's what this administration is excited to announce here this morning uh, to kick off our day. Um, and with that, I wanna introduce uh, our teammate, Mike couldn't have a better teammate, our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. I hope all of you can feel that energy and that enthusiasm and that commitment from the governor in this space. Like this is something that I think I can speak for the cabinet secretaries that we feel like so fortunate to be working together as a team on these issues and we are fired up. We're going after it and that's what today's about and so grateful to be with all of you in this space. I want to thank Bunker Hill for hosting us. Um, and what a difference a day makes too. <laughs> we talked about doing this yesterday and the sun is shining. 
you know, as someone who's been the mayor of a gateway city and a public higher ed grad myself, uh, I know firsthand the importance of institutions like this to our residents, to our communities, especially when it comes to training students of all ages with the skills we need in today's economy. And that's what I think for me makes today really special. The announcement of this program, Mass Connects, think about it. We have so many adults living in Massachusetts who have just like a little bit of schooling. They got in, they got out, life got in the way. I remember talking to Pat Gentile, one of your former um, colleagues, whose admissions were down at North Shore Community College and they were tracking why and a student said, I had to fix my car, like my muffler went. And that was the one thing, like there was, life got in the way for that particular student and family. This is a program that's gonna help us tackle that. That's going to make um, opportunities through Mass Connects not only important but vital to bringing folks into an economy uh, at a time when we need them more than ever. It connects our businesses, our economies, and our communities and we'll all be stronger for it. We're also really excited about the additional investments um, in early college and innovation pathways programs. Those have proven hugely successful um, as the chair of a school committee in a gateway city. Um, we know these partnerships are really meaningful. We have so many young adults who are in high school who want that level of engagement. They want to know what they're learning today is going to contribute to what they're going to be doing in the future. Being able to be exposed to a college environment. Our early college program at Salem was one of the first ones that operated. And I will never forget the pride and joy of students showing me their college ID <laughs> uh, and, and what that meant to them. And it opened the eyes of so many of our first generation students to be able to see themselves attending college through that one, that one window. Um, these are important pathways and innovations uh, and allow students to earn up to 24 college credits. Think about that while you're in high school, getting that exposure that's meaningful to them, their families, and it's something that we want to continue to invest. That 14.4 million expansion we're proposing for early college and innovation pathways will expand access for thousands of students and particularly in areas like IT and engineering, healthcare, life sciences, advanced manufacturing. Those are the strong industries here in Massachusetts that we know if we want to remain competitive, need a talented workforce. So if you're in those spaces, we're going to find work for you and this opens that up. But whatever you choose, we know you'll be well served in real world if you have these skills and education system that delivers. We are um, pumped to really see this in action and I think in particular today to hear from individuals who are already doing this work and know that, you know, these, what these benefits will mean. So I'd, I know we have Yamalith Lopez here, a Bunker Hill grad, Nicole Kane, a student at, at, at Cape Cod Community College, and her daughter who's joined her, and Tom Lazan, Vice President of Manufacturing and Ultragenics. I'm going to ask Nicole to come up first. No, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, Yamalith to come up first and then we'll, we'll hear from Nicole, Nicole and Tom as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, thank you for your support. I feel grateful for the opportunity to be here and to represent many people who come to this country as immigrant and second language learner. I am also proud to represent the many Boston residents who, like me, have so many dreams and goals and who work very hard to improve our life and the life of our families. My name is Jamila Lopez. I was born in Colombia when I was four years old. My parents got divorced after that. My mother decided to move to Venezuela to start a new life. It was very difficult for my mother, my sister, and I to adapt to a new country. In 1995, my father died in an airplane crash. As a result, I came to Boston to take care of my father's business, a small convenience store in Hyde Park. Once again, I was in a new country, but this time all by myself and without knowing the culture and the language. It, it was very difficult to learn the business operation as well as a second language. My first year here, I felt that everything was so difficult without my family. I, I felt homesick. And I was frustrated because I couldn't express myself. Hopeless, and my confidence was low. Over the course of 17 years, I worked very hard to keep the store, sometimes working more than 14 hours a day to be able to keep the business running. In the back of my mind, I always had the desire to go back to college and finish the bachelor's degree that I couldn't finish when I was in Venezuela. I took some English courses, but I never felt confident enough to take the next step. I was afraid of starting college again and not be able to finish it. Thank God, in January 2011, my life changed forever when I was accepted to the Bridges to College at JBS. This program helped me to go back to college, and they introduced me to Bunker Hill Community College. When I started at Bunker Hill Community College, I was sure of one thing. I wanted to get better education for myself and my family. 
I know that everything in life doesn't come easily, but I knew that I had to take the risk, the risk to change my life. I spent long nights and weekends doing homework. And at the same time, I was showing my daughter the importance of getting a college degree and working hard for what you want. Class, um, <clears throat> excuse me. As a first generation student, I was afraid of many moments throughout my first year in college. I didn't know what to expect from my professors, classmates, and assignments. But I was able to have mentors in college and other organizations like First Literacy Organization that provide me a lot of guidance and support. It was very helpful to have people that I could go back to and ask questions about time management, homework, or where to go for further support with my classes. I didn't have a lot of time, but I was able to join clubs and be part of college activities. My professors and classmates made my time at Bunker Hill Community College one of the best experiences in my life. Thank God I'm grateful that I took the first step toward Bunker Hill Community College because I couldn't imagine all the good things that were waiting for me. Thanks to the Learn and Earn program at Bunker Hill Community College, I did internships at Raytheon, Staple Corporation, and Liberty Mutual. I was able to study abroad in Italy. I was awarded all our scholarships through college and MCPA. I was a student trustee. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> when I started, I was thinking only of doing a certificate. In May of 2015, I earned my associate's degree in accounting in a certificate in taxation. Right away, I started at UMass Boston to continue working on my bachelor's degree in management with a concentration in accounting. In 2018, I finished my bachelor's degree. <laughs> Many community college students face unique challenges that make it difficult for us to gain a social degree in two years. Sometimes we can be only part-time students because we're working, we, we are working two jobs taking care of our children, and paying our bills. It is not easy. It took me seven years to finish a bachelor's degree. But one thing is certain, community changes, community college changed lives. Right now, I'm a senior accountant and national manager at Electronic Fastener in Canton. I earn a good salary. I have time for my family and myself. I couldn't have, I couldn't have that with a college, uh, without a college degree and the opportunity that college and higher education offer me. Step by step, never losing my faith and dedication, I have been able to accomplish the goal that I have been working toward for many years. The Master Connect program will be a great source of support for so many people on their higher education journey. This program will allow people to attend community college without having to worry about taking out loans or paying with credit cards, like I did, to finish college. This program will help students to fully concentrate in their classes and have peace of mind that their tuition fees, books, and supplies will be covered. Thank you, Governor Haley, for this great project. I always thank God, my family, and Bunker Hill Community College for their support on this amazing journey. When you have the right people giving you support, the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is Yamala the superstar or what? Yeah. Holy cow, I feel small in the world. Yeah. Amazing. Um, let's, let's invite Nicole up to hear her story about her journey at Cape Cod Community College. Thank you. Can I bring my daughter with me? Oh, right? Tag team. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Oh, I have to go after that <laughs> pressure. You got it. You got it. Oh, well, oh. This has been a, a long journey. Um, okay, so uh, I've been doing this for 22 years, actually. Um, it has taken me 22 years to get to the point of graduation in the fall of 2023. Uh, <laughs> from Cape Cod Community College um, with two certificates. Uh, but where I'm coming from is from a place of just generational poverty. Um, every adversity. Uh, I had my first child at 17. I did graduate high school. Um, after that, it just became survival. 
Um, I always wanted to go to college. Uh, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. You know, I had big dreams. Uh, and um, life just, you know, life decisions, uh, they just kept coming. So trying to keep it short, um, at 28, I decided to go back to, or to go to college for the first time. Uh, because the jobs out there, I was doing everything. I did everything you could possibly do without a degree um, since I was 14. And I still wasn't making it. I wasn't getting any, there was no savings. Um, so I knew I had to do something to uh, change that. And so I started at Cape Cod Community College and I took like, you know, I had a full schedule, full time. Mind you, I had three children at the time. Uh, single parent. Um, I couldn't work and do full-time school and raise my children, so I found out that that was not going to work. Uh, so I had to quit. So after so many years of trial and error, um, I was able to learn how to balance uh, both. Um, well, all five, actually. <laughs> um, I have five children now. Um, and I am 13 years sober. Um, I have um, 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 defeating uh, domestic violence, uh, coming out of that. I mean, coming from the gutter and going into a school, to college, with no, like I hadn't been in school forever. So I have to take math? Well, wait a minute. I just want to learn how to sell these houses. I want to take real estate so I can make some money and I can own my own company. And they're like, no, you have to take science. And, and you know, and it's like, um, okay, but I can't feed these tests to my children. And this is not keeping the roof over my head. Uh, so it was extremely difficult, hence why it took two decades. Um, but I have some, there are some great people at Cape Cod Community College. And, you know, I went in there and I found the radio station. And I found out that I could be the DJ I always wanted to be. <laughs> I said, what? So I can get on here and do a show and my show will be all over the world. You can tune in. I have been doing that for 10 years. I have had different radio shows on WKKL and it literally saved my life. That was the key to, okay, all right, I'll take this math and English, <laughs> I'll do it, um, and I failed, and I just can't stay down, I won't, because it's really not about me. Um, my, I am here to change the generational poverty, intergenerational, um, I, right now, we live, my mother lives in my home with me and my children. So I also have grandchildren now. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is absolutely amazing. But I cannot expect to change any of this unless I do it. So little by little, even though it has taken me this long, um, I'm just grateful that all of you are here and governor is here proposing this. This program is going to be so pivotal. It would have helped me greatly, and I would not have had to probably take so long. Um, but to know now that there are people, people like me, that are coming from places that, you know, <laughs> there was no, there's no hope in school. And, you know, to know that they're going to be welcomed when they come in the door as non-traditional students, you will be expecting me and my issues and my needs and implement those things because it's gonna take a village, it's gonna take teamwork uh, in order to pull us in. And right now people are dying um, from all sorts of things, but my daughter and I started a business, Recovery and Poetry, and mm -hmm. it is our way to give back to the community, turn around and go back and get don't do that now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was fine to uh, <clears throat> go back and go get those people that are just like us. Right now, she shouldn't even be, we shouldn't even have this relationship because 13 years ago, I wasn't a good mom. 
but um, I am proof in the pudding that, uh, you know, miracles do happen. Mm. And with perseverance and asking for help, you can make it. And if all of you are here, and this is 2023, and everyone, I mean, the diversity in this room alone is breathtaking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live on Cape Cod, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, I mean, it's a very tourist, touristy place. You know, it's, everyone thinks everyone there is rich. Wait, no, mm -mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the case. Um, but anyway, um, I am so grateful. I am so grateful that I am even able to stand here because today, isn't today the first day of uh, Women's History Month? Oh. oh my. Just for that alone, this is a pivotal day for my family because my children and my grandchildren will be able to look back on this day and know that I came up here with my daughter with Governor Harry and all of all of you and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and all of you wonderful people and we made history. So thank you. After uh, hearing those two incredible stories, we know the importance of these programs and there are real people behind them. And the other part of the programs that I think uh, the governor and why this whole team is here is the connection it has to our workforce and our competitiveness in a place that Massachusetts uh, can continue to grow and prosper. And we're so gr glad that Tom is here from Ultragenics to share a little bit about how these programs can help our workforce as well. So Tom, come on. So I'm not even going to try to beat those speeches. Uh, you know, all of them were just wonderful and uh, real, really uh, heart-wrenching and, and uh, promising. So I'm the vice president and site head for Ultragenics Gene Therapy. Uh, we've just uh, completed the build-out of a manufacturing facility in Bedford, and it's a gene therapy manufacturing facility. So Ultragenics focuses on rare and ultra-rare diseases. We have four sites in Massachusetts and uh, programs, commercial programs, clinical products, as well as uh, the gene therapy pipeline, which is arguably the biggest in the industry. So I was asked to talk a little bit about the relationship that we have with Middlesex Community College, which is in Bedford as well. Um, I, I've known this program, I've actually been involved in this program for 25, 30 years. So I'm sure many of the presidents know Dr. Bladen, Dr. Mary Lucy Bladen. And I uh, worked with her many years ago when we were doing a similar staff up in Cambridge. And now it's really my pleasure to work with the team again to do so now. <clears throat> so we participate as well in the Learn and Earn program. And uh, we have uh, students who are on paid internships uh, in the quality assurance group, quality control group, the, uh, the pharmaceutical development area, and manufacturing as well. So we've hired a number of those folks. And when I look back at uh, some of the resumes and folks that we have in the organization, the supervisors came from MCC as well. So it's a really diverse uh, group of people. And uh, that's one of the things certainly I love about Middlesex, the diversity of the student population. Uh, it's very close and dear to Ultragenics values as well. So um, we also participate in their lecture series. So um, you know, folks from all of these organizations come in about every month to talk to the students about career paths. I personally mentor a lot of the students, whether they're in the Learn and Earn program or outside of the program as well. I'll, I'll really talk to anyone and anyone who wants to talk uh, about careers in biotech especially. So, <clears throat> so it's really important to me. Um, lastly, I just wanted to touch on the Mass Reconnect program. I was reading about it last night and then Governor Healy's uh, speech this morning. So. You know, what touched me the most was the equity and the goals around equity especially because, again, that's something that Ultragenics cherishes and, and really values and lives. So, and, and then the teamwork especially. So the, the comments on teamwork, again, very similar to Ultragenics as well. The older students coming into the program as well, something that I think certainly benefits the industry too. 
And then obviously with uh, the, the explosion of growth in biomanufacturing in the, in the state of Massachusetts, the real need for uh, trained uh, students, trained uh, operators, associates, quality control is real. So it's great to see this coming to fruition. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody. We're excited to uh, to get out and, and get after it, and we appreciate uh, appreciate folks being here. So. Great. Well, I, I'm certainly open to supporting anything we can do to create more accessibility for community college, and there are a few different ideas out there. We um, came upon this one in particular because it was focusing on a, uh, a population that we thought we could really reach. Again, 1.8 million people eligible, 700,000 already have some credentialing or their way to credentialing, uh, but, 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 you know, we're we're, we're off the path for any number of, of reasons. And so we think that makes a lot of sense right now in terms of dealing with everything from intergenerational poverty to filling the really high demand we have for jobs across a number of sectors. So uh, that's, that's how we came about this. In addition to supporting other important programming along the way, early college, innovation pathways, and you'll see uh, a lot about education later on this afternoon from us. I think we're open to discussions on any of this. Again, you know, Massachusetts, let's remember folks, Massachusetts, we're home to the first public school in the country. A quality education, that's something that, that we don't just talk about, it's actually enshrined in our Constitution. And for uh, so long now, uh, we have relied on education and looked to uh, what education affords, uh, affords people across this state. And it's, it's no reason why Massachusetts is the hub of so much innovation and advancement, not just compared to the rest of the country, but compared to the world. It's also the case there are too many of our residents who have been left behind and left out. And now in this moment, in 2023, we have an opportunity to do things differently and to grow access and opportunity for folks all across this state who for far too long have been left out. So we look forward to, to what is to come. Um, we certainly look, look forward to, to this program and, and would love to see it implemented as quickly as possible as we consider other ways that we can make investments. At the end of the day, any budget is not about numbers. It's about people. It's about investments. And it's about you know, understanding what those investments are gonna yield. And you know, my money is always on the people of Massachusetts. All right. Well, thank you very much. Nice to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you, team. And big thanks to Tom, Yamalif, and Nicole and Zaria. We really, really appreciate you guys. Are, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you.